Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about resistance and Ohm's law, some of the fundamental ideas that are going to help us get into circuits. Um, here are a whole bunch of different resistors, and we're going to talk about resistance in general. All right, so here we go. What is resistance? Well, here's the idea. When you apply a voltage to a conductor, run a current through a wire, a light bulb, anything that will carry current, um, we know we're going to get current to flow. A voltage causes current to flow. However, there is what will happen depends on what material the current is flowing through. And so every conductor, everything that conducts electricity has what's called a resistance. And resistance is just generally a way to measure how this material will tend to resist the flow of current. Um, here's an analogy. A lot of times with circuits, we do this water analogy thing. And it's a really good way to kind of picture and give yourself a conceptual understanding of what's going on with circuits. Of course, these are all analogies. Um, we're not really talking about height differences in a, in a circuit, but when we talk about gravitational potential energy with these ideas, um, the same ideas apply to electric potential energy. So we can imagine water flowing. Um, current is literally the flow of water, just like a, the current of a river or something. So current, you can think of as how much water is flowing. Um, in other words, how much charge is flowing every second when we really talk about electrical current. Um, voltage is similar to sometimes we say pressure. You can think of it as if I have a water tank and, and water will flow out of it. It's very much the same kind of idea as the height of the water in the water tank because that's all about gravitational potential energy. So there will be more pressure down here um, or some different ways you can kind of think about it. And then resistance is kind of a measure of like the narrowness of the pipes in a, um, in a, in a water sense. All right, now wires being thicker or, or wider changes things differently, but this is the, the sort of idea. All right, a water pipe that's thick versus a water pipe that gets kind of skinny, there would be more resistance here. The water would have a harder time flowing through it. So there are properties, um, molecular and even subatomic properties of the uh, conductors that give them different amounts of resistance in the same way the thickness of pipes gives them different resistances to current flow. So resistance is a way to measure this, how much current is going to flow and how much it will impede the flow of current. So let's define it and we'll look at some examples. The definition of resistance is it's a ratio. It's a mathematical definition and it's the ratio of voltage to current. All right, it, you take the potential difference, aka the voltage across your resistor, whether it's a literal resistor in a circuit or a light bulb or anything that current is flowing through, and you divide it by the amount of current flowing through it and that ratio, that division problem is the definition of resistance. Um, all right, so here it is. This equation is in your data booklet, R equals V over I. This equation defines resistance. This is the first thing you want to think of when you think of resistance. This is what it is. You divide how much potential difference is across your thing uh, by the current flowing through that thing, and that will tell you the resistance of the thing. We measure resistance in ohms. Uh, OHM is the name of the unit, and we use the Greek letter omega. Looks like a horseshoe for the ohm. We'll measure how much resistance in ohms. An ohm must be a volt per amp. You can break those down to their exciting base units, but that's the idea. All right, this equation also could be written as V equals IR, which is another very common way of seeing this equation. And this is an equation we'll use a whole lot, V equals IR. Um, not V equals IR is not directly in the data booklet, but it just comes, it's this equation, just reformat. All right, let's take a look at a video uh, simulation example to conceptualize resistance a little bit. All right, so here is a great little simulation by FET. Uh, it's a good one. I encourage you to play with it. This is a really good sim for building your kind of conceptual understanding of what's going on with circuits from the very basic to some of the more advanced. You can build like multi-loop circuits and stuff with this and picture what's going on. So um, for here, let's just talk about the idea of resistance. Resistance is a property of a material and essentially any material that is somewhat conductive has a resistance. So it measures more or less how much the material will resist the flow of current. That's what we mean by resistance. So here's just three examples we can picture. There's three identical batteries connected to um, a light bulb here, a little bit of a pencil here, and uh, this is just called a resistor. These are little uh, pieces that we use 
in circuits to intentionally control the flow of current. Um, and so you can see the current are flowing at all different rates because uh, it looks like the pencil here has the highest resistance. The current is flowing the slowest through it, so it's slowing down the current. Um, pencil is, the, the lead of the pencil is somewhat conductive, so it's gonna let electricity pass through it, but it's got a little more resistance, so it slows down the um, current. We can um, look at some values here if we like. All right, so just to give you a sense, you know, uh, I have a little 10 ohm resistor here. Current's flowing pretty good. 25 ohm resistor, the current flows a little more slowly. And um, I can even adjust the resistance of these resistors in the simulation. I'll make this have a really high resistance. You can see the current slows down. And if it's got a really low resistance, oh, too fast. It's got a really low resistance, uh, current will flow real quick. All right, so that's all resistance is. It's, it's resistance to the flow of current. Um, we can look at some other fun ones. All right, if I want to connect an eraser, well, what I'll see is nothing happens. No current flows because a um, eraser, for example, is made of rubber, and rubber is a very good insulator. So it's got a very, very, very high effective resistance, so much so that essentially no current is really going to flow here. Um, or I could do something like a uh, bad idea. Don't try this at home. But I could connect a paper clip to a battery, and a paper clip's just a little bit of metal. It's got basically no resistance because it just wants to flow right through that metal. And uh, bad news, I, I, I start a fire. Um, all of this current will generate some heat. That is the main effect of electric current on the material it passes through is it heats it up. We will get to that when we talk about power. But there you go. That's the idea of resistance. More resistance means uh, it will slow down the flow of current. All right, so those are all different kinds of conductors that have resistance. Um, when we talk about a resistor that is a specific device that we usually use, it's the little um, oval looking thing that you saw with the stripes on it. Uh, we use them a lot when we breadboard. And so this is the device we were talking about that you use to control the flow of current. When we draw circuit diagrams, which we will look at some examples of, the resistor looks like this. It's a very simple little picture um, of like a big rectangle because that's sort of what they look like. So it's a big rectangle, and then you know we have the two leads of the resistor, the two end wires that connect it to the rest of our circuit drawn like this. So this is how we'll draw resistors in um, our circuit schematics. You will see this in the front of the data booklet with all the different circuit symbols that we'll get to. This is the IB, what you'll see in the IB, all right? Uh, this is different than the American version of the resistor, which you may have seen in some other places, which is like a squiggly, like a, a kind of jagged diagonal up and down thing. Those mean the same thing, but this is how the IB is going to do it. Is sort of a more international uh, symbol. All right, and what you want to know, the main thing that resistance does, and we're going to get into this a lot more when we talk about energy, but a resistor will dissipate the electrical energy as heat. It creates heat. It generates heat. The current, the charges knocking around inside of the resistor essentially make everything jiggle a little bit more and heat it up uh, so they generate heat. So this is how it slows down current. It turns electrical energy into heat. It does that on purpose. That's the job of the resistor, is to shed some of this energy as heat to um, keep the electrical energy wherever you want it to be. Right? Uh, that part is kind of so fundamental to this idea of circuits that this whole topic, 5.2, which uh, if you ask me, should just be called simply circuits, the IB has named this whole subtopic the heating effect of electric currents um, because that's ultimately a, a lot of what we're looking at is current flowing through stuff and heating things up. All right, um, so that's the idea with the resistor. Okay, one other thing related to resistance is a property of a material called resistivity. So resistivity, there's one other equation in the data booklet that deals with resistance and it includes this, resistivity. So resistivity is a property of a material. Um, it explains why when you have an identical in size and shape piece of copper wire and aluminum wire, different amounts of current will flow through them. It's just a property of the material. Um, so the equation is the best way to kind of picture resistivity. Um, here's the equation as you'll usually see it written. It is usually in terms of resistance, and so this equation describes the resistance of an object or a conductor really based on its physical properties. Um, in our Play-Doh experiment, we looked at this uh, essentially, you could, and these two pieces, L and A, 
should make some conceptual sense. So see if you can picture this. So this has the resistance of an object depends on its length, so the length of the object, and so should make sense that the longer the object, the more resistance it has, the more space that the current literally has to flow through. So if I have a, a piece of wire or a, or a Play-Doh resistor, um, and if I have two of them and one's double the length of the other, the one that's double the length will have twice the resistance. That's what this equation tells me. So a longer resistor has a higher resistance, and the resistance is inversely proportional to cross-sectional area. So if that resistor is wider, you can think of it as the current has more space to flow through, so a bigger area means less resistance. So those are the two kind of physical parts that are easy to picture. And then resistivity is this part that just takes into account the material itself. So this is why the same length and gauge of copper wire versus aluminum wire will have different resistances because those materials have different resistivities. All right, um, these are all you know experimentally found. It'll be given unless you're solving for it in a problem. It just depends on the material. Um, and you know it gets into the kind of molecular properties of the material and all kinds of stuff that goes a little beyond what we need to worry about for the course. So it's a value depending on the material. The data booklet equation is just rewritten like this. They have it in terms of resistivity. Uh, again, typically if you're looking elsewhere, you'll see this format of the equation. Just make sure you're okay that these are, of course, the same equation, just some algebra happening. All right, so that's what you get in the data booklet. It just gives you the equation for resistivity. All right, and the last part of this little these little intro ideas is something called Ohm's Law. If you look anywhere else on the internet, um, talk about this in college, most everybody in the world who does stuff with circuits is going to say Ohm's law is V equals IR. That is the practical use of Ohm's law. However, that is not really Ohm's law. This is another, the IB being really specific, saying F equals MA is not really Newton's second law. Well, here's what Ohm's law is. Ohm's law is a sentence, and Ohm's law is a sentence about some kind of proportionality. All right, so Here's what Ohm's law says. It's, it's basically this sentence. If you have a metal held at a constant temperature, the current flowing through it will be proportional to the potential difference across it. So V should be proportional to I. V would be a function of I then with R as the coefficient of proportionality. Um, however, there are devices that don't obey this. So V equals IR is not exactly a V as a function of I always. It's remember it comes from R equals V over I. That's the definition. The resistance is a ratio, potential difference over current. So Ohm's law is just this sentence. When they say state Ohm's law, you want to say something like this. You don't want to say V equals IR. And we'll look at this idea on some graphs. Um, there are devices that obey Ohm's law, so where current is proportional to potential difference. And there are devices that do not obey Ohm's law, where current is not proportional to potential difference. So. Here's a graph. You're going to see these graphs. One of the objectives for the IB is to be able to identify whether an object is ohmic or not by considering its characteristic V over I graph. So you're going to see graphs of voltage versus current um, in the lab. You will likely make some of these graphs of voltage versus current because what you do is you take an object. Maybe it's a resistor. Maybe it's a piece of Play-Doh. Maybe it's a light bulb. And you apply a bunch of different potential differences across that object and you measure how much current flows. If you get a straight line like this, that device is ohmic. The potential difference is proportional to the current and vice versa. All right, so this would be an ohmic device. However, for something like a light bulb, this is what you're gonna see. It is non-ohmic, this graph curves. So again, we have a V versus I graph, and it's true as you run more and more, um, well, as you apply a higher and higher potential difference across the terminals of the light bulb, the resistance will change. Uh, in other words, the current will not increase at a constant rate. You don't get a, a straight line on this graph. All right, so ultimately, you're going to see V versus I graphs, or sometimes you'll see I versus V graphs. Um, you will see both versions, so just pay attention to what's on what axis. But if that graph gives you a straight line through the origin, that device is ohmic. If it doesn't, it is not. So this is what you get for a light bulb, which um, across the pond they call the filament lamp. All right, so that's what you get for a light bulb. All right, um, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Is it a straight line or not? One thing about this equation, resistance. Resistance equals V over I. Resistance is not delta V over delta I. And that's kind of the big idea of why V equals IR is not Ohm's law. 
All right, R is not a gradient. You do not like draw a tangent line. They're gonna even on paper one ask you kind of trick questions where they are kind of prompting you or seeing if you're gonna take the bait and, and draw a tangent line or talk about the slope of a tangent line or something. Resistance is just the ratio at that point. So I just divide V over I to get resistance. So I just take the you know, V value, which is Y on this graph, divided by the I value, which is X on this graph, divide them, and that tells us the resistance of the light bulb at this voltage. So the resistance will change at different voltages because V over I here, I'm gonna get a slightly different number than V over I here and V over I here. But it's not, 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 not the slope of this graph. All right, R just equals V over I, so you just pick the two points. That's sort of the idea. All right, so there you go. That's the basic ideas about R. R is V over I and all those things kind of tied together here. Um, so those are the intro ideas we will take with us as we go forward and further into circuits. So until then, have fun.